High frequency trading is in the press. Uh, and uh, it's been sensationalized and a lot of people, unfortunately, uh, I, I think a lot of people in the, in the, in the media uh, you know, are really trying to make money just selling fear. There's no conspiracy. The markets are not rigged. But these things seem to sell uh, newspaper, get eyeballs and page views and sell books and things like that, right? Uh, and so uh, what I would like to talk to you about uh, with respect to high frequency trading is, uh, is how do these people doing high frequency trading uh, think about making money? And really the operative word, as the speakers before me pointed out, is change, right? Right? Change is a proxy for opportunity in the financial markets. And of course, we don't, we don't sit back in the financial industry and wait for change to happen and then react. We think in advance about change and try to take advantage of it, right? We think, advance of, we think in advance about change by developing strategies, right? And strategies hopefully have a competitive advantage or edge in the marketplace that gives us the ability to earn profits or extraordinary return, depending on your background. So what kinds of change are there in financial markets? Well, the easy one is, you know, prices change, right? If you want to make any money in the financial markets at all, you need a price and you need to change. Otherwise, there's probably not going to, you're not going to be able to make a lot of money if prices don't change over time, right? And of course, trading firms think strategically about how to take advantage of price changes. Yeah, from an economic perspective, there's information in price changes, right? And we can make, make money by, um, by um, uh, uh, exploiting the information in price changes. And of course, in high frequency trading, the key component of competitive advantage is being able to respond quickly. It's not just that I have a trade that can predict the future, I have to beat the competition, right? So certainly, market data changing is one form of change that people in uh, the financial industry and high frequency trading think strategically about. But that's certainly, that's certainly not the only kind of change. Another kind of change is uh, changes in the market environment. So your, your trading strategies might work in a particular market environment. They might not work in a different market environment. And so when the environment changes, you better be ready for it. And so if you're going to be ready for it, you better, better have a strategy for anticipating, for uh, making money off of environmental change. And of course, then the way high frequency trading firms think about that is they have R&D, right? Markets are going to change. Old strategies don't work. New strategies will work in the next environment. I better be ready by researching and developing new trading strategies and have them ready to go when things change, right? So now here, the latency, the slowness that matters is not, you know, the high frequency trading. I need to execute that trade in microseconds. That matters, but in this case, in R&D, it's, it's how fast you can bring your trading strategy to market, right? That's the latency that matters. But there's also a different kind of change, and that is change in what I call the market topography. And that is the laws change. The types of instruments that we can trade in the financial markets change, right? The exchanges change. The, uh, so, and the, some types of technology change. And these are what I call all part of the market topography. And, and uh, as the topography changes, there's also opportunity. Uh, and trading firms certainly think strategically about responding to this type of change as well, right? The problem is when, when, when the topography changes, you might need to develop whole new lines of business. You may need to hire new people with new skills. When the trading went from the floor upstairs 
the old, you know, the traders that had skills on the floor, those, those skills didn't necessarily translate upstairs to a point and click environment. And then very quickly we went from a point and click environment to an automated environment. And so the firm needs to evolve quickly in order to move in the direction of change and take advantage of change. And so firms certainly think strategically about responding or, or anticipating change in the market topography. Uh, one of the most uh, important changes in the financial industry has been that trading used to be about the acumen of individual traders. Right? A, a trading firm used to be essentially a collection of individual traders. Right? And individual traders who were able to extract money from the financial markets every day. Right? So the firm was really the sum of the parts. But of course, when things go automated, automation is an interdisciplinary endeavor. Programmers, mathematicians, traders. The competitive advantage has gone from being the, the success, the, the acumen or savvy of an individual trader to an organizational thing. The ability of the organization to uh, build and operate uh, high frequency trading systems uh, quickly and effectively. Right? So this has changed a lot in the financial industry. I was meeting with a, a gentleman from a consulting firm, uh, had lunch with them the other day, and uh, I, I met him for lunch and I shook his hand and I, and I, I said, you know, I teach algorithmic trading. He said, yeah, I, I just do compliance in the back office. You know, sort of apologetic. And I said, no, you, you don't get it. Compliance is where the action's at right now, right? And that's one of the exciting things, I think, about financial markets is that you know, everything used to be driven by the trader. But because automation is, a, is an organizational endeavor, everybody contributes to the bottom line. Everybody contributes to the success of a trading strategy. And let me tell you, let me tell you how I come to that conclusion. How many people have heard of the Sharpe ratio? Anybody heard of the Sharpe ratio? Right, yeah, sharp, what is Sharpe ratio? It's, it's a, it's a risk-adjusted performance measure. It simply is, the expected return minus the risk-free rate divided by the standard deviation, which is a proxy for risk, right? But nowhere in that equation is, uh, you know, the cost. The cost in the Sharpe ratio is the risk-free rate. Why is it a cost? Well, because, you know, uh, you could, instead of investing in this trading strategy, you could just invest in the risk-free asset, which is essentially which is essentially risk-free, right? And so the it's really an opportunity cost then, the risk-free rate. So I don't want to do the risk-free rate because I got a better opportunity here by taking risk in the markets. And I'm hopefully getting, hopefully getting paid a return uh, for that additional risk I'm taking. But see, that's not how high-frequency traders think about the world. In high-frequency trading, the cost is not the opportunity cost. The cost is the millions, literally millions and millions of dollars it takes to build and operate a high frequency trading business, right? And so your trading strategies don't have to beat the risk free rate. What they have to beat is the fact that, you know, it's gonna cost you a million dollars this year to, uh, to, to, to run this, uh, this high frequency trading system. You better be making more than a million dollars a year. If your high frequency trading system is making a thousand dollars a day, that looks great on a sharp ratio perspective but it looks horrible when you factor in the costs, right? Turn it around, think about it the other way, okay? If I'm an organization that has a very, very low cost structure, and you're an organization that has a very, very high cost structure, if I can develop trading strategies, yeah, that make money every day, because my costs are low, it's profitable for me, that trading strategy might not be profitable for you. Same trading strategy, right? And so the costs now are becoming an increasingly important source of competitive advantage in the high frequency trading industry. And that means compliance costs, being able to comply with regulations efficiently 
is a key component of competitive advantage. If I can do it efficient and the other firms can't, that gives me an advantage. That means I can run trading strategies they can't. Right? Technolog technology costs, computers, IT staff costs a lot of money. If I can build and operate my infrastructure uh, efficiently and cost effectively, I can run trading strategies maybe your firm can't. Right? So all of a sudden, we, we normally when we think about trading, we think about trading strategies. But there's all these, these other forms of change that require high frequency trading firms to think strategically and other sources of competitive advantage that they think about. So, example, you know, imagine if you sit in a room with 10 people and you try and dream up all the trading strategies you can possibly think of. And you do that for 10 years, right? And then there's maybe 20, 50 other firms doing the same thing. You imagine that, you know, after 10 years of dreaming up trading strategies, uh, you can't think of any more. You know, it's almost, like, it's almost like everybody's already thought of them, right? Everybody already, that's not where the competitive advantage is anymore. Everybody knows. Now there's certainly mathematical variations, infinite number of mathematical variations. People spend a lot of time trying to eke out excess return uh, by developing new mathematical implementations of existing trading strategies and known trading strategies. But all I'm saying is that that's not necessarily where all the action is. The other action is in all these other areas that matter. And I think that's particularly exciting because as the topography continues to change, that's where the opportunity is. Okay? Uh, and, I, and, I, and I might, if I might just add to what some of the other gentlemen said uh, at the end of their speeches. Uh, and I think it's absolutely worth repeating. Uh, there used to be a gentleman who's very well known in the financial industry in Chicago. His name was Jack Wayne. And he was CEO of a very large investment bank here in Chicago called the Chicago Corp. And he sold the Chicago Corp. Oh, he, Jack must have been about 65 at the time, I would say. I don't know if any of you guys remember. He sold the Chicago Corp to ABN AMRO. And after he left, he came to be a professor here, so I got to, got to know Jack. He ran our program uh, for, for a few years here. And then he moved on to other things, but he was retired. And, uh, and it's funny because I, Jack was obviously a very, very successful and influential uh, person in the Chicago financial industry and a great friend of a lot of people. Uh, and, and I happened to run into him in a coffee shop over at the University of Chicago, that other university uh, on the other side of town. I ran into him in a coffee shop, and I sat down and had coffee with him. And he said, you know, Ben, I really wish I would have never sold the firm. What, Jack, what are you talking about? It was the crowning achievement of your life. He said, yeah, but I miss it. I miss the action. I miss being part of the game. I wish I was still involved. And I thought, that's the words to think about as you're going down your career path. Don't forget to have a good time, because when it's all over, that's the thing you're Thanks a lot.